how much did uh, KG kind of speak to you? I assume he did yeah. uh, when you came over there. Talk about that experience. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's pressure. You're the first number one pick ever in the organization's history. So you know that they really said you're supposed to be the guy for us, you mm-hmm. know, and like I said, I had, I'm so confident in myself and I knew before I, I, I knew I was going to exceed expectations. So I wasn't really worried about that. But then when you have KG there, you know, it, it's like you said, I'm following KG set, but KG's there. So I get to really like work with him every day and mm-hmm. like know where he may have made a mistake and where I could not make the same mistake and what maybe he wish he knew when he was coming into the league and stuff like that. So I felt very prepared. I felt ready for the moment. Um, I felt like I said, I took three years just a, a, a such a a single focus that when I get to this moment, which I knew it was coming, I'm going to be ready for this moment. I'm going to seize the moment. And I think my rookie year, I did. I definitely did that. So, yeah, no, nah, you definitely rose to the occasion. So I, I feel like I did what I was supposed <laughs> to do. I think PG saw it too. Like the look in my eyes for every workout was like pure. Like it was. This is the. This is the. This is the workout of my life. This is the workout for my resume that will change the game. Did you have like a moment where like you was like, God damn, I'm being like mentored by KG for sure. I for sure. I really wanted to bust his ass every day in basketball. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. So I was really excited that you know a guy who's known as the greatest power forward of our time. I get to go out there and and show him how uh, yeah the new generations here. Boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know one thing that that I took away from being around KG. Oh yeah, he was he was with y'all for a little bit too with the Clippers. He was working around like the facility and stuff like that. This was like all me being teammates with him All Star okay, uh, weekend. Okay. But one thing I took away from him, and I always from this point on, like I'm strong on this shit. I remember All Star weekend. You know they set up food for us and yeah. shit after, and the media and shit was and the coaches oh, and everybody yes, started yes, digging yes. in the food. Players first, bro. He went crazy. At All Star, he was calling <laughs> y'all, At y'all, y'all bitches, y'all motherfuckers, y'all better put that fucking food. That shit goes to us first. That motherfuckers, hey Lord, hey this. Lord, yeah. Lord, Lord, <laughs> who the fuck eating before us, <laughs> Lord, bro? He went <laughs> That's how crazy, he be like he was tripping like that. No bullshit. No, KG went tripping, off. Bro. He tripping, bro. Everybody dropped their plates. They dropped the food, bro. Like everybody ran out of there. It's like yeah, that motherfuckers don't deserve to eat before us. Like, we put our goddamn That's bodies sick. on the line. They ain't eat nah, before we eat. he's serious about that shit. Nah, he was Sounds serious like it. about Very it. Very serious about that. <laughs> and to this day, bro, it, like, I, I carry that shit with me. Like, nah, like, he, damn right. We <laughs> put our God body, like, we playing hard for, for this sure. shit. For like, sure. For sure. Because we would, like, get to the food and, it's gone. bro, we'd be hungry. Like, sh- food gone. Like, Which, everybody that ate but in, us. People in that mo- every little, I know, I ain't, I ain't going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank God YT wasn't there because that would have been. Damn, why been. YT? God damn. YT. Cat, YT, you we don't have to get you a therapist, bro. Cat, so we talked about it a couple episodes go, uh, ago about just like trash talkers in the NBA. Yeah. And so do you have any, you know, we hear some of the stories that have been out about KG and being a trash talker. Yeah. Do you have any good stories you remember as a rookie you're okay. playing with him a little bit of him just going off on somebody and could you share that with us <laughs> like hell yeah what like of what's course. the most disrespectful i mean just- but y'all see, i seen you seen it it's a viral video he's like trash ass <laughs> i was there <laughs> i heard him say it clear as day <laughs> it was better in person than it was on video i tell you that it was better in person yeah. than fair enough i would say that was up off. there i mean there's a lot of good ones i mean but that one i think that one's that one's a good one. That was yeah, a funny one. That I, was funny. I, I think he was talking to EG. I think at the he time. was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was Lennon talking to EG too. <laughs> nah, he was in Minnesota. He was talking. Yeah, he was he behind was the bench. The, he was uh, behind New the bench in his little sport coat, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was in a goddamn sport coat talking shit the like New that Orleans to somebody. Game. <laughs> I, wish I, could, I wish I could be a fly on the wall like when they played in the nineties because social media now we can bro. catch all that shit. I know they were saying some crazy. Bro, shit I'm gonna tell you the funniest here. thing: playing video games with KG. And in a Call of Duty lobby, that is the best oh, thing. I got a story gosh. about that. Oh, that too. shit is the funniest thing I've ever <laughs> seen. The funniest part about KG is when he, when he talked to me, he'd be like, "Lord, you know, he always say, Lord, <laughs> Lord, Lord." Let me tell you something. I always got some ginger ale next to me because the motherfucker be moving too motherfucking fast now. <laughs> he be giving me a song. <laughs> Wait, he said it. Hey, boy, he said it. Hey, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that is some ginger ale. He told me that shit at practice one day at the practice facility. I started busting out laughing. I said, no, this man didn't just tell me. He got ginger ale because the game moved too fast. It gets yeah. easy. 
Oh, no, man. Motion sickness, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me and him. So me and him had to do a 2K. Uh, we had to do a 2K My Player little promo shit with Ronnie, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so me, him, teammates, and I think Ronnie was our third. Oh, my God. Not Ronnie. Ronnie. First of all, it took us like 30 minutes just to start playing because KG didn't know how the hell to work the shit. <laughs> He didn't know how to log in, like how to get on the game. 2K do make you be, His you be mic wasn't working. They be like, nigga. we need your email, your Literally password. Every technical Scroll difficulty he went stuff. through, right? Wait, so, y'all was online playing each other? Yeah, yeah we was on the park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Not yeah. the park. You actually were on the park? I was on the park with KG. No, they should have had a representative there. And it took, them. like, no lie, 30 <laughs> minutes for him to, like, actually get set up. So we waiting on him the whole time. He's like, yo, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? <laughs> <laughs> so we finally start playing. Now we in the game, and he he still don't know, like, he don't know what to do. Nah. Like, YG, YG. He calls me YG. YG, yo, YG. Why call you YG? Because <laughs> yeah. I'll call him OG. So he like, yo, YG. I don't uh, I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mixing though. I'm getting my bag. Oh it was just funny because he didn't know. Like he didn't know what the hell Think to do about in the game. What you had that experience? Imagine being in a Call of Duty lobby and no one knows it's him. Yeah. That's hilarious, <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. But I want all y'all podcast camera. Look. <laughs> think about this. Kevin Garnett, one of the greatest trash talkers of all time, is in a Call of Duty lobby. Arguing with a nine year old. <laughs> the greatest fucking thing you've ever seen. I wish I had content to show y'all that uh, shit. Uh, there ain't nothing fucking better, bro. And he in game chat. He going game. nuts. <laughs> then you feel bad. I gotta back him up shit right. too. <laughs> I'm like little little Tommy out here gonna cry to his parents, man. KG over here going nuts. Cussing his I ass off. Oh my that. god. All right, Jackie, it's time to check in on our picks again. Shh. Playoff times, man. It's getting serious right now. I got to focus. I just won big thanks to Jamal Murray and the Joker beating their projections. How'd you do this week? There you go again. You know I'm up as always. And people don't even know what we're talking about, man. Let the people know we're talking about prize picks. So prize picks is a daily fantasy app where you pick two to six players like the video on your screen. Then pick if they will have more or less than their prize picks projection. You aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. So, Jackie, tell me about an entry that you won on this week. All I did is, 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 is projected that Stephen Curry was going to get more points than he was projected to get in Jimmy Butler. Just did the same thing. I've just picked more and more because that's all it was. And you know what? I know how much money I won, too. <laughs> but tell the prize pick people how much they can win. So you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And on top of that, all first-time users that deposit and use our promo code PODCASTP will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That means if you deposit $20, prize picks will give you $20. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. Cha-ching! Cha-ching. <laughs> 